Hey everybody, what is going on? This is Eric and in this video we're going to cover the top 5 Microsoft platforms to build for in 2024 and beyond. Now before we get started, first thing first, let's understand what is Microsoft. So Microsoft is pretty much secondary marketplace for SaaS software that are built on top of a larger platform. What happens is, in many cases when platforms get big enough, they open up APIs for other developers to build new solutions to their platforms, creating a win-win situation between the platform and the developers. Now of course, platforms understand they can't build all the solutions on their own, especially if they have millions of users. This is why they're opening up their APIs for other developers to build for. The main advantage to these platforms is that now, as soon as they open up their API and their platform and building up an app store for their developers, is that now the platform is moving much faster. More developers are working on the progress of the platform, making sure that it's a better fit for more and more users and they don't have to support every small feature that's coming out to their bunch of new users that are coming into the platform. The main four advantages that developers are getting from this deal is A, usually there is very low competition on these Microsoft platforms and these secondary marketplaces. Second, they don't have to worry about marketing and they're going to get free traffic from these platforms, usually through the App Store. Because when their customers are looking for solutions, usually they're going to go first to the App Store and only then they will look externally. Third, they're going to gain automatic trust from the users of the platform. Because they're trusting the platform, they're automatically going to use the software and apps on the platform. And the fourth and last advantage is not having to worry about billing because in most cases, these platforms are actually making the billing for you and just take their own percentages and passing the rest of the revenue to your business as the Microsoft developer. And of course, there are also disadvantages to running a Microsoft. And there are two main disadvantages. First one is you will have to pay commission. You are getting free traffic, but in exchange, in many cases, you'll have to pay some amount of commission to the platform. It can be anywhere between 5 to 30%, really depend on the platform. And the second is the dependency on the platform. As these platforms, you know, grow and expand, they might actually cannibalize and eat your product alive. Uh, they're going to build the feature that you're building and then their user will no longer have to pay for you because they're going to have it built into the platform. Or alternatively, if the platform doesn't want you any longer on their platform, they can just shut you down instantly. So now that you understand what Microsoft is, let's talk about some of the factors you probably want to check out before deciding which platform you want to build for. The first thing you want to check in is the amount of users and how many paying users are there for the platform so you can really decide if it's a good fit or not. If there are only like 10,000 users, it might be a good idea if you're the only app on the App Store. But if you have multiple apps and there is competition on the App Store, you better make sure that there is enough users to spread around and install your app and actually looking for the solution you're trying to offer. The second thing you need to figure out is competition. In many app stores, you have similar apps doing similar solutions. If you look, for example, in your uh, iPhone or in your Android and you go to the app store and you search for meditation, for example, you'll see that there are many apps doing the exact same thing or similar. So make sure that whatever it is you're building is not available on your platform that you're choosing to build for, or at least the competition is fairly low or manageable. Another great idea would be to just search for different case studies on the platform, find developers that made money through the platform to understand if it's even feasible or not. Another thing you would like to check is check the traffic to the website. See how many new visitors are visiting the website every month to decide if it's a good fit or not. And then you also want to look at the pricing. Check out the different pricing plans and understand according to that how likely customers are to pay for the platform. If there are a million users but they're all free, then it doesn't make sense for you to build for. But if you have 200,000 users but all of them are paying at least $50 a month, you know that these customers can and willing to pay. Then, of course, after that there is the age, usually the younger the platform, the better opportunity it is to play for in the long term. And the older the platform is, either the platform itself is dead or it's just over competitive. Another important factor is the actual APIs available for developers. If there is no API, it's impossible for you to build solutions for this platform. If there is an API, make sure that it's enable the solution you want to build. Usually the more robust the API, the more likely you are to build for that platform. And the last thing and probably the most important from this list is making sure that there is an app store for this 
platform. If there is no app store, there is not going to be a way for the users of the platform to find you. So make sure there is an app store before you begin building. So back in 2022, when we made this video about the top five micro SaaS platforms to build for in 2022, these were the winners. We had Shopify, we had Figma, we had Oculus, we had Slack, and then we had the Google Workspace. Now let's see if these five winners stayed at the top or things have changed and we have new winners. So before we get started, if you haven't already and you don't know, we have a free six episode crash course on how to bootstrap software as non-developer for Microsoft. I'll put the link in the description below. In the last year alone, we've generated over $4 million with our Microsoft and that's why we've created this crash course. We're also releasing a longer form course where we take you step by step through the process of coming up with ideas, building the app, marketing it. This is a longer course of about 86 lessons, something like that. I'll also going to put it in the description below if it's ready by the time you're watching this video. Last thing before we go into the winners, if you haven't already, please make sure to hit that subscribe button so you know whenever we release new videos. And if you like the content so far, hit that like button so I'm gonna feel good about myself. Okay, so we are ready for the list. I'm gonna start with number one. It's important to mention that for me, in this list, they're all the top. I don't think it matters which one you pick. The opportunities are big in each one of these platforms. I'll start with number one, which is Wix. For Wix specifically, we've built two apps in the last year, and so far, we're doing great. According to Built With, Wix have more than 9 million users, and the traffic to their website is well over 10 million visitors per month. But the reason I'm picking Wix is that they're going very big on e-commerce. They're making a lot of changes and opening a lot of new APIs for their platform. In terms of pricing, Wix is free and going all the way up to $150 a month, but they also have other ways of monetizing their users. In terms of the App Store itself, they do have an App Store with over 500 apps and it keeps growing, but again, the beautiful thing is the focus on e-commerce. And what I would suggest if you're going for e-commerce, just look for solutions on more mature platforms like Shopify maybe, like WooCommerce, and bring solutions that are available on these platforms two weeks so you can gain easier traffic with low competition. Moving on to platform number two, our beloved Shopify still making the list, of course, just because the amount of paying users on this platform. Now, according to Built With, Shopify have more than 4.6 million stores, which is more than double the number I remembered. Last time I checked, it was over 2 million stores, which is impressive by itself. But not only that, the base price on Shopify is $40 a month plus commissions, and it goes up all the way up to $2,500 a month. That's impressive. Now, the traffic to the Shopify.com domain is almost 15 million visitors a month. And in terms of the App Store, there are more than 8,000 apps. So it is very competitive, but if you find a good and unique solution, you're definitely gonna make money and it's going to be fairly easy to build it. The third platform that is going to make the list is ChatGPT. ChatGPT opened up a new App Store where you can build your own GPTs and ChatGPT users can add it to their ChatGPT to make it more effective and access more places and more information and make your bot more customizable and basically use AI better. Now, I don't think there is much to say about ChatGPT. I'll give you some random data so you have it in your mind. More than 180 million users on the platform just launched last year reminding you guys if you don't remember the traffic to the website openai.com is more than 1.6 billion visitors a month. The price obviously is free for most users, but if you want the paid version, it costs $20 a month. And of course, if you're a developer, you can pay per usage of their API. And in terms of the App Store, I couldn't find an exact number, but I didn't see thousands of apps, maybe a few dozens or something like that. So still the opportunity is huge. Moving on to number four. I don't know if you remember that, but in 2022, Oculus made the list. But I do think that once Apple released the Apple Vision Pro, Mark Zuckerberg just sat down and cried in his home because Apple Vision Pro is amazing. I haven't tried it. I am looking to get one, but 200,000 of these bad boys were sold, I think, in a day. So right now there are only 200,000 of them, but 1 million extra are planned on being sold in 2024. So the market gets bigger. But the beautiful thing is the price for this bad boy is minimum of $3,500 a piece. And of course, it's connected to the Apple App Store. 
sort. The beautiful thing is, it's a completely new type of technology, a new type of interaction, and there are so many new opportunities to build apps specifically for Apple Vision Pro. If you want to cook with it, if you want to train with it, if you want to work with it, there are so many things you can now adjust specifically for this type of users that are willing to pay a lot. So if you build something that is good, high quality for business, you can really take it on to the next level. Again, I find it very interesting. I think it's a very interesting platform. And the last one that is making our list is monday.com. So I don't know if you know that, but monday.com opened up a new app store not long ago and there are still not many apps there. Now, just to give you some numbers, monday.com have more than 186,000 paying users and the pricing goes from nine to $19 a seat, okay? So if you're a company and you have multiple seats on monday.com, you pay for each seat. So the, this new app store really shows up beautiful opportunities and I think it's very easy to build for. You can take a lot of examples from other task management systems like Click or Jira or whatever, find up solutions that are missing on the Monday platform and just build it there. So this is it guys, this is the top five platforms for 2024. Just to give you some tips and tools I've used to analyze this list, I use BuiltWith to try and understand the amount of active users on some of these platforms. If I couldn't find it on BuiltWith, I just used Google or ChatGPT to get more information. The pricing page on these platforms usually is available, so it's not easy to look for it. And again, our good old Google. And then I also use AHRFs to figure out the traffic for each of these domains. Okay guys, thank you so much for watching. You now know what is Microsas, what to look for, which are the best platforms to build for. And if you have any questions, any suggestions or anything like that, just make sure to comment them in the comment section below. I promise I will answer each and every one of you. I'll see you on the next video. Bye-bye.